And wow, this is a big cave. This interesting lava tube cave was discovered in 1954 by a logging crew. New Cave, as it was named, is a sinuous, spacious, 6,000 foot unitary lava tube cavern. It is walkable from the initial terminal to the lava seal. This opening portion, I walked through this cave with my family, my brother and dad, and my brother's children. One of them is Jacob, that's my nephew. He's the one who I do all the hiking with. Nice thing about this cave, I can already feel the heat. Right here, it's 15 degrees warmer. It's so nice, I'm taking my gloves off. This is, we better get going. It's like a dragon's throat in here! The eastern part of the main section of New Cave is about 2,700 feet long. Although it is basically a unitary tube, which means it's just a long straight tube with a gentle slope throughout, rudimentary sections of an upper level are present in several areas. Oh my goodness, there's an upper story! Guys, look! Holy cow! Guys, come on, look! Whoa! Look at that! Oh my goodness! Follow me, come on, here! Oh, I see it goes back, it goes back like 10 feet! Oh my goodness, guys, it's really cool. It's like a throat. It's starting to get smaller and smaller. I'm gonna get all the way to the end. See what's back here. Woo! That is cool. <laughs> Pretty far. Super cool. Cool. And just a couple tries till you get it. Here's a spider. Now these spiders in caves are almost always white, as are many of the little bugs and critters found in caves. They are troglobites, which means they live their whole life in the cave. A trogloxine is a species who uses the cave, but does not spend its entire life cycle within one. Mice are an example of this. Frogs are known to inhabit caves during certain parts of the life cycles, but no frogs are known to live solely underground. Super smoky in here. Oh my goodness, this is a cave under us. Oh, we gotta get down in there, brother. Oh, I'm hopping in. Jeez, this is cool. Dude, it's so roomy down Go in slow. here. Go slow. Go slow. All right. Whoa. <laughs> Can you see anything? Yeah, it continues a ways and it kind of widens. Ooh, look, a rock. Follow it. Alrighty. Dude, it goes so far. Does that go anywhere down there? Dude, this continues forever. Okay. You take the low road, and I'll take the high road. Ooh. It's so cool. We actually do not know what cave this is. We were looking for a little cave called Wildcat Cave, but we don't know where that is. We found a series of sinkholes, and this cave is a monster. It's way cooler than anything we expected. So it's got this corridor that goes down here, and uh, what do you think of this, Jacob? I think it's beautiful. I think that the corridor was probably bent deeper before the lava flowed through here. And, uh, what, what, what do you see with the crack there, Jacob? Here's the crack. It goes up, all the way up, along the ceiling, and all the way back down, and around, all the way down there. So. What a cool crack. So this is Jacob and I. <laughs> we, uh, 
What are we just seeing? A bat. Yeah, we're just uh, over here and there's a bat on the ceiling. We don't want to wake him up from hibernation or whatever he's doing. He was kind of shaking a little bit and it was kind of weird. And yeah. Jacob was really afraid of bats. He was crying a little bit, so I was trying to console him. That's close enough. I, I like bats, they're cute. <laughs> I know, he's a really cute little guy. And, uh, he was like tiny, he was so cute, he was fluffy. Yeah. Uh, we're not bad experts, but I do know that they do hibernate in the winter. And it seems like whenever we talk real loud or you shine a light on them, they kind of shiver. They go, they just like... Yeah, they get the, the, what are the, the hippie hippie shivers. shakes. Yeah. So we just filmed them for just a second with real low light and a high powered camera. So we're a little ways away, but uh, we like seeing bats. But in this case, we saw one, he looked healthy. Some of the bats here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, get uh, mold disease and they turn white, white bat syndrome or something like that. It kills and, them. Uh, yeah, it can kill them. Jacob has white bat syndrome, but I'm okay, so... What? Uh -oh. No. So neither one of us like darkness, and neither one of us particularly care for being alone, and neither one of us particularly care for small spaces, and yet... Here we are. Is that a pinch? No, it's not a pinch. No, oh, no! It's, it's a crawl! I hate crawls! It's a crawly! Also, I like the... And here you can see the ultra-heated rock melts and even when it's cooling and drying in place, it drips down and makes these baby stalagmites and stalactites that are solid rock. Some are longer than others and they grow in interesting shapes and, and they're just all over the ceiling. In some places, they're very prominent. Look at these big cracks along the side where the side layer dried. Yeah, look at that. That's cool. It's like skin of the cave. So we got a couple crawly spaces up here. We don't know what they is. Oh, I didn't bring my... It is super crawly. Um, let's go around. Uh, no, I think it pinches, but I will take a look. Very interesting. Oh no, I love it. Most of these lava caves have lava on the floor so that if you have a backpack or something, that's fine, but you cannot drag it on the floor. This will tear your clothes to shreds. Every single space has crawl space in it. We're crawling through stuff that has jagged edges on top and bottom. We just got through one that's so tiny and it looks like we're gonna have to go through one again. It's just constant. How often do we squeeze through tight spaces? Um, like five times a cave? Like just constantly just through these constantly. tight spaces. And the spaces aren't very easy because we have these jagged... This is the pointy pointy. Lava rocks, so you can't take a backpack. I take my backpack and I set it in front of me or I drag it along. And I've seen these caving videos where people have uh, special backpack gear and rain gear and they drag it through caves. Well, I tried that and uh, these caves with lava will uh, shred your backpack, shred every bag you have. Tips of my shoes are just shredded and, I, and they're brand new. So lava caves, rough on gear. Very. Whoa, this is the pointy pointy, which is the spiky, kind of like a wavy figure in a cave. But this is not an easy tube. You can't stand up. It's not a walk and there's a lot of breakdown yeah. where the roof we falls in. We had to take our helmets off to get through some of the spots. I don't have a helmet. I have this hat. That's what that's what saved my life. Mm -hmm. Hey, but it's open. Well, other than being really probably bad for our breath. Our lungs. So far. Yeah, other than being bad for our lungs, uh, it's pretty cozy. Temperature and everything's fine. Yeah. I could stay the night. It's snowing outside, you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to breathe this crap in all night. You would probably die. No, you just have a sore throat. True. It's not that bad. <laughs> oh, if I breathed in your farts, I would die. Jacob? Yeah? Let's get out of here. Yes! <laughs> Jacob and I found in the upper room, we found a, a spot that pinches off and we crawled underneath it. Someone had dug it out and it, it goes a ways back there where it is the coolest. That last part of the cave? Yeah, yeah we're open down. Back part. There. It's what? How many people have been back there? Not Very few. Yeah. Not very many. I mean, a lot of people go in that cave, you know, maybe about 50 a year, 100 a year. But at this point, I don't know. Not very many. I mean, there's a candy wrapper there from the 90s. 
there's food cans in there from the 50s. Uh -huh. So there's people in there, but 